Well, hello, Shoreline. This is your devotional for Wednesday, May 19th. We're continuing through the book of Proverbs, and we're in Proverbs chapter 20. And now we're getting to a place in Proverbs where it really is just every little couplet, every verse is like almost its own little world, its own little piece of wisdom. And so I'm going to give you four challenges or exhortations out of Proverbs and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Here's my encouragement. Pray right now, God, may one of these things smack me between the eyes. May one of these things hit me in the heart. May one of these things give me the proverbial kick in the, in, in the backside to get me moving to be more of a wise person. So here's the exhortations. Number one, brace yourself. Don't drink too much. And that's not talking about uh, Cocoa Ovaltine or Nestle's Quick or whatever your you know, upbringing had. It's, it's talking about alcoholic beverages that put you over the edge because God's concerned for your health and what you say and do and how you treat others. So here's the passage. Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. Here's the key. Whoever is led astray by them. It's not saying you can't have a drink. Because Jesus made wine and the wine was better than the wine that the people had before. And I've had people try to argue with me and say, it's a, it's a sin for a Christian to have a drink. The problem is the Bible doesn't teach that. But it does warn us that excess in this area is dangerous. I remember sitting in jury duty uh, where I was waiting to see if they were going to call me up to be in a case. And case after case after case after case. Guess what was a driving factor behind somebody's really poor behavior or illegal behavior or harsh behavior. Over and over and over again, alcohol, too much of it. So warning number one, don't drink too much. Warning number two, draw out the quiet person. Draw out the quiet person. Here's what we read in Proverbs 20, verse five. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. What's the point? There are people you're gonna meet who are quiet. They don't need to be up front. They're not, they're not just talk, talk, talk. But oftentimes, the old saying, still waters run deep. Some of the times the quietest people are the most interesting, the most insightful, and oftentimes have deep reflection on things of faith or things of life. Here's my encouragement from Proverbs. Those quiet people that hang back, slow down, take time, and draw them out. And you'll be amazed at what God has put inside of them. I have three sons. All of them have great things to offer. Two of them offer them very quickly. One of them, you have to draw it out. But when you do, there's great stuff there. Draw out the quiet person in your life. If you're the quiet person, let other people draw you out. Challenge number three, be that person. Be that person. Well, you say, what person? Well, listen to God's word from Proverbs 20, verse six. Many claim to have unfailing love but a faithful person who can find. A faithful person. It's hard to find faithful people today. Faithful friends, faithful spouses, faithful employees. Here's the encouragement of Proverbs. Be that person. Be that faithful person. People will seek you out. People will want to be around you. People will respect you if you're truly faithful and follow through. Exhortation number four. Beware of dishonest gain. Oh, be, Proverbs says, be careful when you get financial gain or gain of some sort and it's done inappropriately. It's done dishonestly. Listen to these words from Proverbs 20, verse 17. It's a, it's a really powerful picture. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouth full of gravel. <laughs> it, you know, it, food gained by fraud, if, if you gain something, but you do it dishonestly, this tastes sweet at the time. Man, this is great. But here's the point. It ends up tasting like a mouth full of gravel. Give it time and it will come back as something gravelly, poisonous, destructive. And so be careful, be, be honest. Have integrity in how you relate with people, how you do business and how you handle your finances. And God will bless you along the way. Well, this Sunday, uh, we begin a little two-week series called A Thriving Church. And here's what I'm going to preach in those two weeks. Week one, what's a great, amazing thing that will help the church thrive? Week two, what's the, one of the worst, most poisonous things that destroys a church and keeps it from thriving? This week is week one. Be sure you register for 8, 30, 10, or 1130 worship. Let me pray for you, and I'll send you off with a blessing. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word that is powerful. The, these four little truths 
I pray one of them will touch each of our hearts, will live it out, it will change us for your glory, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll see you for next week's devotional.